Broadcasting live from the studios of Fox Sports Radio. Bang, bang, won't stop till we're legends. Here's Doug Gottlieb. Known as 17 or Philip Rivers. He joins us here on the Doug Gottlieb Show on Fox Sports Radio. 192. Can you even remember, like, those those two years behind Drew Brees? Do you even remember them? Gosh, that was a long time ago. Long time ago. 192 is a lot of games. You know, I always, when I was, when I was younger, I always thought the record Favre had. You know, was like that's the that's the one. Like they, of all the records, you want to catch that one, and I I'm not gonna get to, I'm not gonna get there. You've been really you've been really honest about that. You were asked about playing into your 40s, and you're like, that that that's not that's not me. So I, I guess the question is, how do you know when it's enough? Yeah, I'm, I may get I may get to 40 or 41. I don't know, but I'm just not. We're not. You know, the the, the way out there in the 40s, uh, I have no desire for that. I th- I think. Just the guys I've talked to, you'll know when it's when, it, when it's time. Uh, you'll know, and I hope that's not anytime soon. I don't even want to even hint to that. Uh, but I feel like I have a handful of years left. I'm excited. I've had a good camp. We've had a good camp, and and I feel like our roster is at a place now where we got a chance. You no, know, I it, I mean, listen. There's a lot of expectations, and rightfully so. We've talked about Tom Telesco, your general manager, is going to join us later. Uh, you know, I've talked to him privately about. Heck, not only you have this year's draft class, you got last year's first and second round pick. You haven't seen Lamp yet. He comes next week. But you get Mike Williams, uh, who I know is a, a, is a big get. So you you add everything you add in free agency and to a, essentially one and a half draft class. That's a and a, a roster that won nine that probably should have won 10 or 11 last year. That's got to be a good feeling. No question. I think we have to we have to pull from last year but not go, hey, man, we were one of the hottest teams last year. We'll just pick up and – uh, pick up where we left off we can but we have to make sure we it's the old boring one day at a time approach and keep our head down because last year there wasn't much expectation out there teams moving uh, they're coming off to you know four and a five win season and this year the way we finished there seems to be a little more buzz on the outside which is good but we still um we still know we got a lot of work to look do. your dad was a coach i know you're going to be a coach when you stop playing and i think the hardest thing to coach is how, how to win right just how to how to, how to win, how to believe that at the end of the game, something's going to go right and not something's going to go wrong. And you've been around this franchise long enough. I've been a fan and, you know, for, for a long time to know that that's the opposite of what so many Charger fans and some Charger players have acted like, which something's going to go wrong even when you're playing really well. How do you change that? Well, I think uh, there was a stretch there where we won a bunch of those games. Now, I'm talking way back. None of these guys yeah. <laughs> were on those teams. I remember the 14 win oh, year. Yeah, 06, 07, 08, 09. It was just, we're, I don't know, but we're going to find a way we're going to win. And that's how we went until, obviously, we had some tough playoff losses. But then we hit a stretch, you know, really 15 and 16 especially, where the game was close. It, we found a way to lose it. And... For a number of different reasons, I had my hand in them. Uh, we all for a number of different reasons, and then I felt like last year we just needed to win a few close games to get rid of that, and I think we did. And, and you know, some of our wins we were up by bigger margins, but we won some of those games. We won nine of our last twelve, and so now it's oh, it, it, it's not like it was. You know, in fifteen and sixteen, I'm I'm saying that that's what you tell these guys. You can tell them, but until you go do it, it doesn't matter. Philip Rivers joining us in the Doug Gottlieb show. There were a lot of reports. That you didn't want to do the LA thing when you were in San Diego, when 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 it became a reality that this was in fact going to happen. What what, what was your mindset? What was actually your thinking? Well, I, I think in all fairness, let's shoot. I think we can just speak as as normal people. Uh, that wasn't your my preference, you know. <laughs> who, who? Yeah, you've been here for 14 years. Aren't you excited to to go to another city? No, but when it becomes a reality, you go. All right, let's go. You know, you, you, you know, you've, you know, did, did you ever say if you guys go find a different spot for me? No, I, I don't think I ever got that far. I just I felt like, you know, you go through those normal emotions, but then you go, hey, look, the Spanos family, this organization has entrusted me and shoot, hired me, paid me to be the quarterback here for a long time. And if we're going to L.A., then let's go. We're going to saddle up and, and go. And we didn't all the way go. Right. We didn't no, all the way perfect. go. It's perfect. <laughs> we didn't okay. all the way go. But I, but I am. I'm all in. And I think I, I, I wanted, you know, again, we have to earn that here in the, in the community. But I wanted uh, – the fans up this way and, and the community to know I am all in when it comes to being the quarterback and the leader of this franchise, but we, it was best for our family to stay put. Okay, so you stay in San Diego, and I thought you were getting one of those sprinters, but you got, what's it called? What's the? It's just an Escalade. Well, okay, so what do you guys call it? it? Yeah, QB Mobile One. Okay, yeah. QB, QB Mobile One. <laughs> okay, so, so you decide, I'm sure your wife decided, hey, we're staying, <laughs> right? You got eight kids, we ain't moving. And you're like, all right, how am I going to make this work? And how did the idea of 
let's get a mobile uh, like yeah, quarterback it's a mobile room. QB room. So how'd the idea first come to be? Well, we were we were shoot. I, we looked for houses. We were we were all in on moving there. At some point, I said we can't do this. I can't I can't stay up there four days a week, and we're just not doing that. That's kind of been our thing. Wherever we are, we're there. I'm at home every night. You know, the whole deal. And so, but then I, I, I drove it a few times and I said, gosh, it's really, the facility's just right there. Uh, you know, right the 73, four, five split. I go, it's not but an hour and five minutes, hour and 10 minutes. What if I wasn't driving? You know, driving it, no way. Cause you're, yeah. you're cutting into time to study. You're also, that wears you out when you're behind the wheel. Yeah, I know I drive it. I drive that far to when work. When you're behind the wheel, yes. it can, it's taxing. So I said, shoot, what about that? I'm sure they do that. And I just typed in, I just Google search, you know, like a cute mobile office and Becker Automotive came up. And they're up, based up, I guess, north of L.A. or somewhere. It came up, and they were just, they were, that's what they do. And there's just, you know, ones for they had for sale that were used and other ones, and I just called them, and shoot, they, they so got you, it done. Did, did you pick your own driver, or did they pick it for you? They got it done. No, I, I did that. Uh, wh wh so who's your driver? Well, it, uh, it's his name is Charles. His name is Charles, and Charles is awesome. And uh, I'll leave it at the, I'll leave it right there as far as any more disclosure with the driver. But Okay, but, so, so, but, give, but give people a sense of your day, because... As you said, you're all in. Okay, you get up what time? Well, normal we, normal day, different now. Yeah, normal day. So a Wednesday and a Thursday in the season. So I used to get into the office about six o'clock right. to start the work day. Well, now I'm getting in the office literally in my driveway at six o'clock. So I, I I didn't have to change my work schedule that much. At six o'clock, we pull out and we pull in the office at ten after seven. And you watch that early. and you and you watch watch all your films. Yeah. So I mean, I just start the day, whether it be a day where I'm watching, you know, a third down cut up or a blitz cut up, or whether it's I'm studying our call sheet, or whether we're, you know, uh, watching games of opponents, or whether shoot, there's there's certain time, you know, when you go, I'm taking a 20 minute power nap, you know. So, um, and then and then when the day's over, we'd usually stay in the office till after six o'clock in San Diego because I only had a 20 minute ride home, and I like to get home and sit down at the dinner table and we have a normal meal on those nights. And so instead, when the day's over at 5 o'clock now, I hop in, the, hop in and we go home. So I'm still getting home at 6.40, 6.30. On the way home, it's a little longer. It's usually yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah, you get that, get that San Diego. Once you get to o Oceanside, Carl's it's bad. Yeah. But, but, you know, even then, it's like, all right, you're in the car another 20 minutes. So either you rest, either you make a phone call, either you watch another cut up, you find another third down play that you want to, you know, call Wiz or Shane and say, hey, I got another one we got to put in. I mean, it really had, it really worked out better than I could have imagined. The weekends were tough because I had to get used to a normal home weekend. Right. You know, the normal home weekend was walkthroughs over 1130 and it's go home and watch college football and hang out with my family. You're not going back to San Diego after walkthrough and then back up here for meeting Saturday night. Sure. I mean, Saturdays are the worst. Yes. Saturday traffic, I couldn't get over. It's it was, unbelievable in L.A. It was a preseason game last year on a Saturday, and I said, hey, I think I'm going to – now's the time to try it. Yeah. I'm going to leave at 1130, go home, and see what it's like coming back at 6 o'clock. Well, I got in the car and went to the Waze app, and it said two hours and 20 minutes. I said, I'm out. No, That's it. So so we had to get used to that. So they've come up. You know, they've come up, and we've gone to dinner and stay in the hotel. We, we've had to adjust our – our home day I routine. I think you might need to get a place where you where the kids hear the ocean crashes here. Just a, a weekend place for, for for the Rivers Clan. That's not a bad idea. Uh, Philip Rivers joining us on the Doug Gottlieb Show here on Fox Sports Radio. Um, look, you're a guy who you have a ton of pride, and I'm I'm intrigued. You know, in so many guys in your draft class and other quarterbacks, they talk about the all-time greats. And you look at your numbers, and you ask guys in respect around the league, and they mention your name. But sometimes nationally. You get because the team hasn't achieved success recently. We pass over Philip Rivers as one of the great quarterbacks of this generation. How does that feel? Well, I think it comes with a position. You know, the head coach and the quarterback are the only two players that the record's tied to their name, right? Record meaning win loss and have you won a Super Bowl. It's almost the opposite for wide receivers, right? Wide receivers, when you're on a bad team, like Calvin Johnson, his it's best year, you. they won four years, they won four <laughs> games, but nobody ever points that out because he put up the numbers, but you only put up those numbers because you're bad. Anyway, sorry, go ahead, proceed. No, but I just think, I think it, it comes with the territory a little bit, but I, again, I think what you said. Not that I even think of myself with some of those guys. I know some some of my numbers are up there with those guys, which is crazy. I remember two years ago or whatever, I passed you Ninus and something. And I talked to my dad, and he was a little choked up on the other end of the phone, which got me a little choked up because he said, I never met my grand, I never met my dad's dad, my granddad on his side. And he said, I just can't believe it when I look up there and it has you and Johnny Uninus because your granddaddy wouldn't believe it. He loved Johnny U. You know, so some of those things, I allow myself in the offseason to go, guys, that's crazy. You know, there's Dan Marino, his poster was on the wall. There's John Elway, poster on the wall. You know, not that I think I am with them, but in, but in some of those categories, you go, gosh, that's crazy. So, but 
I la- I don't. I don't. The guys that go, I don't pay attention to that. I, uh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, I, that's not why you play. Did, did you watch the speeches at Canton? And think, oh yeah. This is. Oh yeah. This, I watched, what, what, I watched what I'm going to do when I get there. I watch them every year, uh, just in case. You know, just in case. <laughs> uh, but it's it's uh, it comes with it. But but those things that you want to win, you you don't want to win. So oh, you know, you, I'm going back to what you said about some of the the the, the guys you talk to around the league. It's the guys, your opponents. You you really that's the respect that you want most is the guys you play against. Sure. They go, you know what? For ten years it was a battle, and that that those are the those are really their their perception is really what you care about most. Uh, but shoot, do we want to win a championship? Bad. I, I don't like to say I, and I think if you asked Ben and Eli and Aaron and Drew and all those guys, they would say, shoot, we, it took, we, it was we. I know we all know that, but sometimes when they say you didn't win a championship, I go, all right, you know, we, we're going to fight like crazy to win one, but, you know, it just you, not, it, there's a lot of people that it goes into winning the game. No question. I mean, even, even Pate, when he won his last one, I mean, he, his arm was shot, right? I mean, that was an unbelievable defense. And they had, you know, they had just enough offensively to kind of get him over that, yeah, get him over that threshold. But like Peyton has had 15 seasons that was better than that last year, but he wins a championship. Well, I laugh, I laugh about the way we judge some things. Uh, Tom Brady, the year when the Seahawks didn't run it down there, and, right. you know, and they threw the interception. Yeah, Seahawks shouldn't even been there because well, of the, the the Packers. But and, and so the Patriots won. So and I do think Tom's arguably the best to, to ever play. But when they intercepted the ball, everybody said Tom Brady. You know, he won his fifth or whatever. He is now the greatest quarterback to ever yeah. play. But if Seattle would have scored, he wouldn't have been. Yeah. He, he was on the sideline. He played the same game. You know, it just kills me sometimes. I think that I mean, I laugh at it because I go, no, he still is one of the all-time greatest. Not whether or not the guy made a play or not on defense. You know, how did you go from two years ago turned the ball over a lot? Last year, I know Coach Lynn challenged you. You got to put, you know, you got to take care of the football a little bit more. But how do you do that? Because you know, look, you, you got to make plays, but there's a limit there. How did you change, especially that number? Well, I think two things. There's a story to every interception and every turnover. We we know that. Uh, and but ultimately, and I've always believed this: the ball comes out of my hand. It's, it's my responsibility. You know, if you look over the 12 years I've started, I've really taken care of the football pretty good. But I hit a stretch there where I didn't. And uh, I do believe, as we all do, this is probably one of the biggest correlation to winning and losing is, is turnovers, both both getting turnovers and giving them up. And so last year, I think what happens when you lose, we talked about some of those close games. We talk about the injuries we've dealt with. We talk about that, is you try to do a little more. Right. And it, it's good intentioned, but it usually doesn't work out. It's because well, I want to help us. Right. And you, and you lost, you lose Keenan. And you know, and you're so you're trying to force you're things to guys to, that aren't want, aren't as talented. I don't want to will him open. I don't want to will this drive because we need to win this game. And that in the end, you look back and you go, nope, just keep doing your job. Stay right it's, here. When, when the play presents itself, make them. Because I, I feel like as a, you know, I feel like I need to make. I, I I'm I'm in a role on this team to where they're counting on me to make some plays. Now you can't just go out there and dinking around and not make any plays. I need to make some tough throws and big throws and convert third and longs and you know score a bunch of points but at the same time just do my job get the ball to these guys and and keep us in these games and let it all happen because at the end of the day you try to do too much usually it doesn't work out you talked about all the talent you have on the offensive side of the ball uh, I think that'll be added when you hopefully you get Forrest Lamp uh, next week and we'll see when, when he gets up and running that solidifies that that right side a little bit more um, but the skill positions Melvin behind you Austin's a guy with great speed and quickness uh, and then, you know, Mike Williams, you got uh, Benjamin, who's a great deep ball threat that I know you love to throw to. And then, you know, Keenan finally healthy. You start to see the type of talent he has. How much, though, does losing Hunter change things? It's uh, – there's I, 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 I think it would be doing him a disjustice to say it wasn't a huge loss. I mean, he's he was – he already was – playing well for us he was gonna I mean there's no telling what kind of year he was gonna have this year so I think it just again one I don't like giving the old next man up you know and I because I think that that's in you undermine the guys that got hurt wait a minute you're talking about a Pro Bowl tight end in my opinion but it's given some young guys some opportunity to get a lot of work and 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 be all right there and then I think you mentioned the receivers Mike Keenan Tyrell Travis and there's a handful more fighting for that fifth spot Maybe this four wide. Maybe we're hey, get all four of them in there, you know. Or maybe there, there's, it's, there's 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 85 is still unsigned. I just I wanted yeah. to, I want to point that out. No question, I'm still in conversation with him <laughs> often. Um, Virgil Green's coming in from Denver. He's doing a nice job. Some young tight ends are again. They're getting a lot of work. I, I, I keep in contact with the lady five. He tells does, me. Does he, does he tells text me you or ready. you text him? Uh, he, I usually start it. I usually start the conversation, but uh, he's staying ready. 
we'll see what happens. I just, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Again, I, I, I've kind of, um, I mean, shoot, I, everybody knows my love for him, and, and I would be super excited to get him back. But I've steered clear of the push for it deal, you know, with Tom and John and Coach Land. That They'll handle that, and if he does trot back out here, I don't think it'll be hard to get back in sync with him. Well, listen, uh, you being happy means that you know you got a really good football team. Uh, you being healthy, obviously, is something we can count on every year. Can't wait to see you out in the football field of this season for the Lightning Bolts, and we appreciate you joining us. I enjoyed it. we got to do it again. But, hey, listen, I'm, I'm around. I'm around this anytime. And I like to stand up and do interviews. This kind of gets me in my sit, comfort zone. Correct. Correct. You, know, you can sit you there. Can, and, you, yeah, it's get me going a little bit.